Hello, I'm Steph and I'm going to teach you how to make a right angle weave bracelet today using the absolutely gorgeous um, Paradise Shine Two Times from Swarovski. Um, this is a four millimeter zillion cut um, bead which is ideal for right angle weave because their shape just sort of stick together really really nicely creating a really uh, tight shape. So I'm going to use um, 0.25 Supple Max uh, for my weaving here. So what I tend to do to start with, I've cut a piece just just um, longer than half a metre. I'm going to secure the two uh, lengths. I've just got a long piece that I've folded in half. And basically I'm just going to crimp a crimp tube. I'm using a size two here where the two ends are folded. And then I'm going to cover that crimp with a necklace end. I'm just going to take the two ends through the necklace end and that's going to cover my crimp tube nicely. So take that to the end of the cord. Okay, so you can see my necklace end sat inside there and I'm just going to close this up. So I'm using chain nose pliers and I always grip hold of half of the necklace end and then gently press the other half up with my thumb and then finish by squeezing the two halves together. I always find you get a much neater close if you do that rather than trying to do the whole lot with pliers. Okay so I've now got two lengths of supple max thread coming out of my necklace end. So now I'm going to start the actual weaving. So with right angle weave I'm going to start with a crossover bead. So I always hold on to both ends of my thread quite close um, to the ends and then pick up one bead. Just scoop that off my bead mat. And then with the other length of thread, take that down the same bead in the opposite direction. And by doing this while well, you've got both threads close to the end, you can actually see where the threads are crossing over like so and now you can get hold of both ends and just pull the threads and you end up with the bead sitting down in the centre. Now inevitably the bead always wants to sit one side more than the other so if you loosen off the tension you can then just slide the bead down so it's sitting directly above the necklace end rather than on one side or the other. Okay so that's the start. After a crossover bead, you want to pick up a single bead on each side and let that fall down to the bottom. So you'll end up with three beads. So you can see there the crossover bead and one bead either side. So now I'm going back to a crossover bead. So holding my threads close to the end. So I'm going to pick up one bead and take the other thread down the same bead creating a crossover and then you pull those down to the centre and that creates your first little square so the so square has right angles hence where the name right angle weave comes from so it's a really effective design something that often looks far more complicated than it actually is which is always nice so now we continue in the same way, repeating the two steps. So I'm going to thread one bead on either side. Let those drop down. And then pick up a new bead, which is the crossover. So it's just two steps repeating. So you pull that down. And now you can start to see the pattern build up. If I pin that down flat, you'll be able to see. Now if it gets a little bit loose you can just pull the t pull the threads up and get your tension nice and tight. There we go. So now you want to continue in this way and you keep going until your bracelet is long enough.
Okay, so this is all the right angle weave uh, once it's built up and it looks really effective. Um, you want to carry on beading until when you wrap your bracelet around your wrist you've got about um, half an inch to an inch um, gap. If you like your bracelets nice and snug leave an inch, if you like them a bit looser a little bit more. You can actually finish your bracelet right here so you would attach your necklace end and you would have this lovely um, right angle weave bracelet as it is. However I'm going to add a little um, design feature um, so what I'm going to do for now so that I don't lose the beads off the end of my bracelet here is attach a bead stopper so I'm just going to squeeze that and pop that on the bottom there I'm going to try and get it quite close to my beads so things don't move around too much get both threads in there, there we go and I've cut um, a second piece of Supple Max thread here and what I'm going to do is right at the beginning where the necklace end is I'm going to thread the thread through the very first crossover bead and if I hold the two ends together I'll know that that's roughly the centre of the thread in that first bead there. So I've threaded that thread that's coming out of that very first bead there and I also need to thread that through the first bead on the side. It's got caught around the foot of the thread. There we go. So now the spacer beads are going to essentially fill in all the gaps in between these beads down the side. So where the right angle weave comes together, all these gaps here. So I'm now going to pick up a spacer bead and then go straight through that bead along the next bead along the edge. So, you can see there that's where the new bead is and then I'm going to pick up another bead so these are all the same size all 2.5 millimeter and then I'm going to go through the next bead pull that through and you can see they just slot really nicely into those gaps and then the next one Okay, and then you carry on all the way along this edge and then you repeat the same on this edge as well. I tend to find that I do a few on this side then a few on that side because sometimes you end up with the bracelet curling and then it will make it more difficult to do the second side whereas if you do a few on each side and um, keep alternating and um, it's a lot easier. So I'll do my next few on the opposite side. Let's go through that bead first and then pick up a spacer bead and then carry on along this side. Already at this end you can see what a difference that makes. I think it just nicely finishes off the bracelet. So I'm going to carry on adding the beads. Okay, so I've added all the spacer beads on now so you can see down each side there is a lovely little silver bead in between all the edges. And now if you find um, that your beads get really tight and it starts to pucker up a little bit and it gets a bit uh, wonky close to the end just remove your uh, bead stopper and then you can just gently ease all the beads down towards this side ever so slightly until everything's sitting nice and flat. So now to finish off um, the, bead, the threads that are coming out of the side beads and um, you just want to cross those over inside the very end uh, crossover bead from before so the one from this side wants to go through that way and then the one from this side the opposite way as well so all your ends can be kept together. Now to finish off the bracelet you want to make sure there's no gaps and that all your threads are tight at this end. And I'm going to thread all the ends through the back of a necklace end which 
a bit tricky when you've got four ends. There's two, three and four and that wants to sit down close to your beads and now I'm also going to thread on a crimp tube a full list of all the ingredients for making this and the quantities used uh, will be below the video along with links to where you can buy everything so now that crimp tube is now on there now because of the threads wanting to um, spring out sideways when you push the necklace end down it's just going to keep springing back that's just the nature of where the threads are so an easy way to combat that and I'm going to turn this around because I find this easier because I'm right handed I'm going to be sliding the crimp tube with chain nose pliers I'm going to get hold of my crimp tube so I can slide it down and I'm going to push it down inside the necklace end and up against the beads so there's not much of a gap there at all so as soon as I'm happy that that all looks okay I'm going to give that a really firm squeeze and that way you have everything lined up nice and straight and now I'm just going to double check that all my threads are secure because I don't want everything to jump off afterwards and in fact one of my threads is a little bit loose so I obviously need to just give that another firm squeeze this is why it's so important to check that your crimp beads have always gripped before trimming off the ends so the last thing you want is one of these threads to pop out of the uh, crimp while you're wearing it so that is now gripped all of these threads so I feel quite confident cutting those off so I'll just chop all of those off at once and then I can close the necklace end again so at the moment um, our two ends have got hooks on them rather than loops and uh, so the first thing I need to do is close up the hooks so I can just do that by pulling the very end of the necklace end down to create a loop there we go do the same on the other side okay so now we can attach our clasp so I was going to go for a toggle clasp because I quite like a toggle clasp on a bracelet I find they're a little bit easier to do up so I'm just going to use six more jump rings here and I've got one side gripped in the jaws of the chain nose and then I've got a second pair of chain nose I'm going to gently twist that open so it's just open enough to pop one end of my bracelet in and part of my clasp so it's going to go in there as well and I'm just going to twist that back together when you're closing jump rings if you just go past where the two ends meet when you're twisting it back together you don't end up with any gaps in the jump ring so that's now nice and secure and then we can do the other side in exactly the same way it's really effective and what's really nice about the paradise shine is how sparkly they are and you can pick up um pinks greens greys all sorts of different colors um within them so it'll go with loads and loads of different colors uh, obviously we've got a huge range of four millimeter zillion shaped beads which are perfect for right angle weave so there'll be a color to suit everyone <laughs> 